This video is kindly sponsored by Jasmine Silk, a clothing brand that uses only 100% mulberry silk. But more on that later. What is up? Welcome back to Mindful May. We are discussing clothing fibers today. This might be the nerdiest video I've ever done, but if you've been around for a while, you'll know that it's something I've taken more interest in lately, is paying attention to what my clothing is made out of. So for my own knowledge and awareness, I wanted to educate myself, and then I figured, why not share it while I'm at it? So in this video, I'm giving a breakdown of clothing fibers, starting with natural fibers, moving into semi-synthetic fibers, and then synthetic fibers or man-made fibers. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each. And then in the next video, to keep this one from being too long, we'll talk about how to recognize these fibers and where to buy them. Jumping in with my favorite first, natural fibers. First off, what are they? Natural fibers are materials sourced from plants or animals. There's probably some debate about animals being a natural source, but I'm not gonna get into that today. We're gonna stick with that definition for now. Starting off with cotton. Cotton is made from the natural fibers of cotton plants, which we have probably all seen pictures or videos of. If you can picture like a little cotton ball, it looks very similar to that. Cotton is primarily composed of cellulose, which is a carbohydrate that's the main component of plant cell walls. Cotton is comfortable, it's breathable, absorbent, hypoallergenic, and easy to care for. Cotton also doesn't release microplastics when washed, contributing to a cleaner environment. Untreated cotton, and generally any clothing that is 100% cotton, is completely biodegradable. There are different types of cotton, starting with Pima cotton. It's considered the finest type of cotton in the world. Pima's cotton fibers are extra soft and long. The cotton is native to South America and the American Southwest. Pima cotton is resistant to fading, tearing, and wrinkling. And then we have Egyptian cotton. It's very similar to Pima cotton. They're in the same scientific class and it has the same resistant qualities, but it's grown in the Nile River Valley in Egypt. Next, we have upland cotton. Upland cotton has very short fibers and it makes up about 90% of the world's total cotton production. The crop is native to and grown in Central America, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Southern Florida. Lastly, organic cotton. Organic cotton is any type of cotton that's grown without chemicals and from plants are not genetically engineered. The downsides to cotton are that it uses a lot of water, like a lot. It's prone to shrink if not washed correctly, but the largest downside is that cotton farming, aside from organic, often relies heavily on pesticides and fertilizers, which can contaminate water sources. We don't love that. Next, we have linen. Linen is a durable natural fiber derived from the flax plant. Linen dries in the air pretty fast. It's relatively absorbent. It doesn't hold on to moisture as much as other fibers can. It helps regulate your temperature while you wear it. Its environmental footprint is very small and it's biodegradable if untreated or undyed. Linen Linen is stronger than cotton, and it becomes softer with each passing wear and wash. Cons to linen. For some, a con would be that it wrinkles easily. I personally like this look. It's expensive due to the harvesting and labor-intensive practices to process the flax, needs more gentle care when washing, and is prone to fading. None of these feel like cons to me. They just seem like the natural process of the wear and tear of clothing, but I figured I'd list them and let you judge for yourself. Next, we have hemp from the stalks of the hemp plant. It's durable, it's strong, it's eco-friendly. Hemp has proven to be one of the most sustainable fabrics. It's three times stronger than cotton. It has natural antimicrobial qualities. Hemp is a CO2 negative material, meaning that it stores more CO2 than it emits. Its production requires very few pesticides and herbicides, and it releases very few toxins into the soil and ecosystem. It's also biodegradable. Cons to hemp would be it's a little more rough. It can be stiff and wrinkles easily. Next, we have wool. Wool is 100% natural, renewable, sustainable, and untreated wool is completely biodegradable. It's temperature regulating. This quality keeps you really warm when it's cold outside, kind of acts as an insulation for your body. It's chemical free, which means that no toxins are released into the air during processing that could potentially pollute the environment. Wool is flame resistant and very durable. Cons to wool is that it can be expensive, can be itchy. It's not great for those with allergies to lanolin, which is the oil excreted from sheep, and it can be found in their fleece. It's important to be aware that wool production can involve the use of chemicals, which can have detrimental effects on the environment. Though wool is made from sheep's hair predominantly, other animals like goats can technically produce wool. Moving us on to cashmere. Cashmere is a natural protein fiber that comes from the cashmere goat. It resists wrinkles, maintains its shape well. It's said to be roughly eight times warmer than sheep's wool. 
untreated cashmere is biodegradable. Downsides to cashmere, very specific care instructions, prone to pilling, and it can be expensive. Again, I don't think it being expensive is a true con. It's a very luxurious material because it's harder to process and there's not really anything wrong with that. But speaking of luxurious, this moves us into our next fiber, which is silk. Silk is a natural protein fiber produced by the larva of a moth. Silk is made primarily of a protein called fibroin and it's known for its shine and softness as a material. It's naturally hypoallergenic, has moisture wicking properties, and then its smooth texture reduces friction, which can minimize irritation and damage to both your skin and your hair, which is why we love silk pillowcases, sleeping eye masks, scrunchies, and like hair turbans while we sleep. I think by now we've all heard the benefits of silk for our hair and our skin. And this brings me to today's sponsor, Jasmine Silk. Jasmine Silk is a clothing brand that uses only pure 6A grade mulberry silk. If you haven't heard of it, mulberry silk is considered the highest grade of silk available. Now I have a lot to learn about the different grades of silk, but what I found fascinating in my research is that mulberry silk specifically comes from the Bombyx mori silkworm that feeds exclusively on mulberry leaves and that's how it gets its name. How cool is that? Jasmine Silk sent me some pajamas to try and if you've been around, you know that I, one, love a matching pajama set, two, I run warm while I sleep, and three, I'm moving my closet to natural fibers, so this collaboration was a match made in heaven for me. The silk is incredibly soft. It has a very light, almost buttery feeling. It just feels amazing on my skin when I slip these on. The silk is very breathable, so I don't wake up hot or sweaty in the middle of the night. The silk helps regulate your temperature, so you stay cool and comfortable all night long. This material is made up of ultra fine silk threads, but it doesn't mean that it isn't durable. On the contrary, due to its long and uniform strands, silk is one of the strongest of the natural fibers, which is pretty impressive to me. As I said in the beginning, silk is one of those fibers that is luxurious in nature, meaning traditionally it's quite expensive to buy items made of pure silk, Jasmine Silk makes that luxurious experience affordable and accessible for those who value natural fibers and a good night's sleep. Honestly, all of this clothing fiber study has been so fun and interesting and eye-opening for me. So I wanna thank Jasmine Silk for sponsoring this video and giving me another reason to dive into the world of natural fibers. They also gave me a 15% discount code to share with you guys. It's May 15 and the link to shop is below in my description box. For reference, I ordered the short sleeve and pants set in avocado green. the camisole set in navy, and the short sleeve and shorts in black. I sized up a little because I like my pajamas to be more roomy and they fit perfect. So check it out below and enjoy. Continuing with our natural fibers, bamboo is made of bamboo grass, specifically the pulp. Pros are it's soft, it's breathable, it's lightweight, biodegradable. Bamboo regenerates, meaning you don't have to continue to replant it, and it doesn't need fertilization to grow. It kind of just grows wild. The cons are that it's a very tricky fiber. I found in my research that a lot of greenwashing happens, and sometimes when you find an item that is labeled 100% bamboo, it might actually be a blend of things might have cotton in there or viscose or rayon. I got a little lost in the sauce and confused on what information to trust. So I'm not really sure where I fall on this material yet, but I know there are trustworthy sources out there. I just didn't dig in and find specific brands or companies that are trustworthy. So if you know of some that you love, please do share below. Next up is Raimi. This is a cellulosic fiber, similar to that of linen, but it's made from the stalks of the Chinese nettle plant. The stalks of the nettle plant are harvested and then processed to extract the fibers, much like how flax is redded to make linen. It's biodegradable, it's comfortable, it's breathable, making it really suitable for humid climates. The fibers are uneven, which gives it a very similar look to linen. It's low in elasticity and does not shrink easily. It's a sustainable fiber. The shorter fibers and leftover fibers are used to manufacture paper. We love that. Raimi has eight times stronger tensile strength than cotton or even silk. So very strong fiber. The cons are that it wrinkles easily and some find it to be stiff. Moving on to a subset of natural fibers, the animal-based natural fibers. While wool and cashmere are byproducts of animals, these are made from the actual hide of the animal. 
we're talking about leather and suede. The differences between the two is that leather is made from the outer side of the skin, while suede comes from the flesh side. Leather is buttery, it's smooth, and has kind of a sheen to it, while suede is more matte and has a little bit of texture. These are both obtained from tanning or chemical treatment of the hide to prevent decay. The most common leathers, of course, are from cattle, but of course there are others. I'm just not gonna cover those, like alligator or snake, for example. Leather biodegrades, but it does so slowly. Depending on the chemicals used to treat it, it takes about 25 to 40 years to decompose. The pros are that it's strong, it's flexible, it's durable, it's very easily repairable, so leather can last for generations if taken care of properly. It can be produced sustainably. Some use a lot of water and chemicals for the tanning process specifically, but it seems that every material I've mentioned, there's a sustainable way to do it and then a not sustainable way to do it, which is probably true for just about anything. The last pro of leather is that it grows softer over time. Moving on to semi-synthetic. I'm not diving as deep into these, but just wanted to do a quick overview. First of all, semi-synthetic fibers are those that are derived from natural or plant materials, but they undergo a chemical process to actually create the fibers, making them neither all natural or all manufactured and synthetic. Starting with rayon and viscose, as I understand it, these two are interchangeable. It is technically biodegradable, but only underground. Rayon does not biodegrade in landfills because it releases toxins from the production of the fiber and the dyes used. Rayon and viscose are made of cellulose, but while rayon is made from natural materials like beech trees or bamboo grass, rayon and viscose undergo a chemical process, which will technically put it in the semi-synthetic fiber category. Moving on to modal, this is a bio-based fabric that is made from spinning beech tree cellulose. It's generally considered a more eco-friendly option than cotton because beech trees don't require as much water to grow. Therefore, the production process uses 10 to 20 times less water than cotton does. The pros to modal is that it's soft, it has a nice drape, it's breathable, and it is biodegradable. The cons are that it wrinkles, doesn't insulate well, and the production of modal involves chemicals, and in some cases, unsustainable harvesting of wood to source it. Next, we have lyocell and tensile. So while modal is made from beech tree pulp, lyocell and tensile is made from eucalyptus trees. Lyocell is a plant-based fiber, but again, processed with synthetic substances. Tensile is a brand name for semi-synthetic fabrics made from wood pulp. So it's a type of rayon and it's known for being soft, durable, breathable. And you can actually check out their website, tensile.com, if you wanna learn more about their brand specifically. The last category is synthetic or man-made fibers. These are fibers made by humans through chemical synthesis, combining different elements to create something new. Starting with polyester, we all know polyester. It's a synthetic fiber made from petroleum-based chemicals. Polyester is specifically made from crude oil. I did want to start off with a few pros, just to be fair. Polyester is durable, dries quickly, it's a versatile fabric, it's very cheap, and it's easy to care for. The cons to polyester. Oil is a non-renewable resource, and it's a significant source of pollution. It also requires a ton of energy to create. Then finally, the biggest problem that all synthetic materials have is that the average polyester product takes over 200 years to biodegrade, meaning it will fill landfills for centuries to come. Polyester garments can also shed microplastics when washed or dried. Microfibers are so small that many can pass through wastewater treatment plants, allowing them to enter rivers, lakes, and bodies of water where we swim. I watched a video recently that says that the microplastics are so small they can even end up in our blood. Not to freak you out or scare you, just to empower you to research, I will link that video below. Just two more downsides to polyester, it is prone to static buildup and pilling. Next, we have acrylic. Acrylic fabric is made up of plastic threads that are interwoven. The plastic threads are made of a man-made polymer fiber created from fossil fuels through a chemical process. Acrylic fabric is made in a very similar fashion to that of nylon and polyester. It's prone to pilling and static buildup, lacks breathability, has poor temperature regulation, and it's less environmentally friendly than natural fibers because it doesn't biodegrade for several hundred years. The pros are that it's affordable and durable. Next is nylon or polymer. Think tights, stockings, yoga pants, etc. Nylon fabric is a polymer, which means that it's composed of a long chain of carbon-based molecules. There are a few different types of nylon, but most of them are derived from crude oil, just like polyester, also known as petroleum. A great deal of energy is used to make nylon. Large quantities of water are used in the production of adipic acid, which is the secondary part of most types of nylon fabrics, is released into the atmosphere. And this is considered to be 300 times worse for the environment than CO2. 
Since nylon fabric is entirely synthetic, this substance is not biodegradable. Some forms of this fabric are recyclable, but not all waste management services recycle this substance. To conclude, I will be donating all of my synthetic pairs of leggings. Just kidding. But truly, this project has really opened my eyes to what I'm putting on my body 24 seven. Aside from showering, I'm typically fully clothed. So this makes me consider not just my jeans and my t-shirts, but my undergarments, my workout clothes, my pajamas, everything. I hope this helped give you more information about clothing fibers and helps you make decisions for your own body, for your own family. I didn't intend to make this video to demonize any particular fabrics, but I feel with the information I found, it just kind of happened naturally. And this is really just like the topmost layer. I didn't even dive that deep into any of the fibers. So there's much more for me to learn, but as it stands, I've definitely walked away with a few new guiding principles for how I'm going to shop and what clothes I'm going to wear. I also did want to say it's clear that there are sustainable and clean ways to produce fabric materials and there are kind of nasty, shady, unsustainable ways of producing them. But this is true with everything these days. So use your own discretion when choosing what fabrics, materials, and clothing to buy. To end on a positive note, let me know your favorite fabrics below and if this discussion has been on your radar for a while or are natural fibers a totally new idea for you. I know for me, it's fairly new and a little bit overwhelming. That's why in part two of this video, we're gonna discuss how to find natural fibers. So I will see you for that one. Cheers.